All right, guys, as I promised before in one of uh, Chucky's videos, I'm going to do one on the oxypropane setup. Now, oxypropane is sometimes controversial. Some people say that sucks, you're not going to use it. It doesn't work as good as oxyacetylene. I personally have not had any problems with the oxypropane as far as cut quality and uh, ability to cut. There are some disadvantages, just like anything. It also has its advantages. Uh, propane is a lot easier to get a hold of. It's a lot cheaper. You can buy it at Lowe's or Home Depot, and if you run out on a project on Sunday afternoon, you know, you just grab the one off your grill, and exactly. vice versa if you run out of fuel on your grill. And, and as, uh, as far as that goes, propane is easy to get a hold of. The one disadvantage is it takes a lot more oxygen for the, for the same amount of cutting that you would do with the settling as far as, you know, the flow going through the torch. Um, another disadvantage is it puts a lot more heat into the plate. That's also an advantage, though, if you're trying to heat something. You really don't need a rose butter or any kind of tip like that because you're getting a lot more BTUs through the torch tip itself. Um, the, the big thing is people also, you know, they say that uh, propane is not as hot as acetylene. The temperature, in fact, is not as hot, which is why you get more BTUs because you have a lot more gas flow coming through the tip. You got a bigger flame and it exactly. compensates for that. So you, need, for sure. you need the more gas flow to get more BTUs to get a, a temperature hot enough to kindle the metal and get it to a melting point. So as far as setup goes, um, that's enough of a chemistry lesson for one day, but um, you got your oxygen here. Uh, this one's getting kind of low, but I'm just going to go ahead and crack it. Now you always want to stand off to the side when you're opening these, because if something goes wrong and this thing flies out, you don't want to be in front of that. Open these slow. You want to open these valves all the way up. As you can see, my tank's getting kind of low. <laughs> yeah. It's going to need a little frit, uh, refill. Side note here, like an oxygen tank or a C25 tank or something, it can seal so it'll be leak free in two positions, all the way closed and all the way open. So if you only open it like halfway, you can lose some of your gas out from around up here. Exactly. And it's actually different with the acetylene, you only want to open that about a turn. But uh, anyways, we're going to turn this up to about 35 PSI as per the tip. So there's 35 on our auction. That's set up and good to go. Now we're going to come down here to my wee little propane bottle, <laughs> which I know this looks completely goofy. But whenever we started out, uh, this propane bottle was full and that oxygen was full. They burn at about the same rate. So we're going to open this just a little bit. All right, as you can see here, this tank's getting low. They're normally around 150 or 200, if I'm remembering correct. And we're going to dial this one into about 10 PSI. Not PSI, whatever you call that. Actually, it would be I think it is PSI of all. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Edit. Uh, <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. Now, another difference, too, if you're going to run propane is the grade of hose. Uh, this is a grade R hose. It holds up to the liquefied petroleum. Um, an acetylene hose, which is grade T, I think, will break down uh, over time, supposedly. Uh, another difference is the regulator. You're going to need a different regulator because, again, the seals in them are built a little bit different, as well as the unlimited pressure adjustability. It's not capped off at 15 PSI mm -hmm. like in acetylene. On to the next difference here. Torch body, everything's the same. However, the tip's going to be different. And for those people that have used acetylene, they'll like this a lot better. As you can see here, it's a two-part tip. So we've got the inner part here where the gas comes around, and then this outer part. Now, why is that better than acetylene, you say? Well, for the simple reason when this gets dirty, I take it out, I wipe it off, I may have to use a tip cleaner on that one little port right there, but that's it. It's good to go. Mm -hmm. And then I put that back in. That beats having like seven or, you know, nine holes right. to have to clean out there. Now, if you don't mind here, where exactly do you find a beautiful set of Smith equipment like this? I understand that Smith is pretty much a top of the line and, you know, gas cutting equipment. Well, it's controversial, but that's what a lot of people <laughs> tend to yeah, prefer. I, I prefer Smith. Just, I like the set of the torch. I like the feel of the torch. That's what I started cutting with, and that's probably what I'll stick with. Um, mm -hmm. At work, they use Harris, and I'm not a fan of this at all. <laughs> Granted, they're like 100 years old. But uh, I actually ordered this set online from uh, Baker's Gas. Baker's Gas, all right. I think it was probably around $225, which isn't bad. You still have to rent the bottles and everything like that. But a setup, you know, it came with the torch, tip, regulators, hose, everything you need already for propane. And this is some so. beautiful, shiny chrome equipment here, too. But all right. All right, guys. Now, Onward. On to the next thing. I, I think a lot of people, whenever they say they don't like propane, is because they're not using it right. Um, you'll notice I'll set up the tip to how someone would probably set it if they're used to running acetylene and then how it's supposed to actually be set. And then we'll go ahead and make a cut with it so you can just see the quality of the cut 
is you know comparable to acetylene or other things like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open our oxygen all the way up here. All right, so with that on full blast, I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Those are important. <laughs> my holy gloves. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna come over here. Now this is gonna be a lot different. You don't get that sooty crack like with acetylene. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Now you see as the flame's coming out the end here, I'm gonna have to add, turn that down so it's not jumping all the way out the end. All right. And I'm gonna add a little bit of oxygen. You're gonna hear that kind of whirl sound. That's something you wanna hear. Now back to what I was saying, if someone was used to running acetylene, they're probably gonna set this torch up something like that. Yeah. And that's really not gonna do you a whole lot of good. Another thing is there's not enough gas flow to keep that flame out of the tip, and real quick that tip's gonna get really hot. So we need to turn it up, add oxygen once, and then normally twice, add a little more fuel. Woo -hoo -hoo. You're gonna hear that whirl. Now when yeah. we set this on the table, you're gonna see these kind of sharp like a star pattern. That's about what you want right there. Alright. All right. Yeah, speaking from my oxyacetylene experience. That doesn't sound like a properly lit torch. That sounds like a rocket about to take off. Exactly. But this is not oxyacetylene. That's a big misconception that this is what you want. You don't want that real low, small flame. For right. sure. That goes back to one of the disadvantages, how much more oxygen flow we got from using throughout this. Yeah, you can hear the oxygen roaring on out of there, man. Yes, sir. All right. Now, another thing is the three heat time. This metal is completely cold. You're going to see it's going to take maybe a little bit longer, but not that much longer. So here we go. So as you guys can see, you know, if you don't have that much extra time to spend waiting for something to preheat, you're probably in a little bit too big of a hurry and you should just get a plasma <laughs> machine because that really did not take any time. No, that Again, didn't. That's about 3 8 plate. It was completely cold when we started. That's and as you can see, those cuts, you know, they come out pretty daggone tasty, but I mean, I'm rather skillful at cutting if I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Man, but, that is I mean, the... minimal slag on the back side knocks right off. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was gonna weld this, I'd probably take a wire wheel and just get all this kind of stuff out off of here. Yeah. But if we uh, go ahead and pick this cut apart a little bit, maybe along this uh, top edge here, it could have could have been possibly a little hot, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that cut turned out. That's beautiful, man. Just one of the main quality things with cuts is these lines. They're nice and straight. So you can tell it wasn't, you know, traveling too fast. Mm -hmm. Bottom side, there wasn't much slag, and what slag there was chipped off easy. Top side, maybe a little bit hot, just because this, this corner's not real, real sharp. But for the most part, I would be happy with a cut like that, and that's going to work and get the job done. So Definitely, man. If uh, you guys have any more questions or want me to do anything else with the torch, just uh, leave a comment. But other than that, thanks for watching, guys.